Hello everyone and welcome back to episode 201 of your favourite Formula 1 show. Yes, Knowing Wheel returns this week out to review the Mexican Grand Prix in what was a weirdly good but boring race all at the same time. Of course, as always, I'm joined by Jamie183. How, how are we doing, sir? I'm good. Yes, I, uh, as the resident Max Verstappen fan... I'm I'm not in the best mood after that race, to be honest, but uh, we'll get into that later. But yes, if you haven't seen the race, obviously go and watch it before you watch this podcast, because there will be spoilers. Of course, there is always spoilers, but people know that going into the show as well. Yes. So if, if you haven't learned 201 episodes in, uh, yeah. then I think you're, you're damned to never quite learn, sadly, uh, at the end <laughs> of the day. Um, but I mean, yeah, obviously... We did the preview show last week, didn't we? And as practice went on, Jamie, first of all, we're going to dive right into it, aren't we? Because we kind of covered everything going into the weekend in last week's show. It looked like on paper, McLaren, Ferrari, Red Bull were all going to be right in the fight this weekend. A bit like mm. what we saw at Cota, but probably even closer. Yeah, yeah probably. Um, and Ferrari look, yeah, looked on it again. Obviously, the one-two in Cota. And... Yeah, they've really come on strong in the latter part of the season. You kind of have Mercedes strong for a little bit in the fight where Ferrari were chilling in 7th and 8th each week. And then, like, suddenly it's just kind of pendulum swung the other way. And Ferrari are back with those front two who've kind of been there and thereabouts most of the season since Miami. We're talking, I mean, Red Bull arguably have been the third or fourth fastest car quite often in the last few races. But, uh, yeah, it was it was set up to be a good one. And obviously... Uh, George Russell managed to bin his, uh, bin his new upgrades off in practice too yep. um, for the second second week running destroying an upgrade package so that was very smart from him yeah uh, but no he had the old car though last weekend he had the silver he did, spec car because he destroyed his new car in qualifying the last weekend oh sorry yeah la- wait yeah at USA he binned it yeah sorry I get you know um, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, obviously McLaren were the ones that looked like on Friday they would be the team to beat. Obviously, we had that extended second free practice session, didn't we, Jamie? Uh, obviously, mm. for Pirelli to do some testing. Talk, talk me through your kind of thoughts and feelings. Obviously, we, we sit down and watch every single session. Oh, so, yeah. So let me know. I, I totally knew that they did that. Uh, no, I actually, I did. I watched the three-minute highlight package on, on YouTube, I'll have you know. So, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, Oli Berman and Alex Albon crashed. I know that. They did? Uh, that was in Q1. Uh, sorry, in FP1. That, that was in FP1, yeah. And um, Robert Schwartzman got a five-place grid penalty because of it. He did. Which he'll ne- he's he got Him more in... penalties than race starts. Yeah, that's actually impressive, now you think about it. Yeah. I wonder if anyone else has ever done that. I would have thought so. Um, that guy who didn't start and got disqualified and DNF'd. Hans Heyer. Hans Heyer? Yeah, yeah. Oh, look at that. Where have I pulled that from? Yeah. And yeah. Wild. Hans Heyer and Robert Schwartzman, they're, they're both up there. They are right up there, the pair of them. Um, but yeah, like you said, obviously, Ferrari Red Bull look right there. McLaren seem to be the pace setters, though. Um, but, but very, very quickly as we got into qualifying, well, I mean, it was drama right from the get-go, wasn't it? Sergio Perez hyped up. He's never been outside the top six in qualifying here in his Red Bull. Uh, you know, home Grand Prix, kind of everybody, uh, you know, kind of wanted to see him do well this weekend. And he immediately is out in Q1. Yes, and not even close. He was 18th, wasn't he? And yep. given that one of the cars he beat was Joe Guan Yu, who, yeah, who is a quality lap together I mean, to save his life. Well, he's just 20th each week, isn't he? He's very consistent. Yeah, he's very, very, very consistent. Consistency is key, as George Russell once taught us. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, he was... Like Perez dropped an absolute stinker uh, to to have nowhere, not even much chat. He didn't have a lap deleted or anything, did he? He was just rubbish. Yeah, yeah. It was really bad. And to say, like, yeah, how much pressure he's been on, it kind of looked like he maybe turned a corner with Baku in Singapore, but then there, his good tracks, and he still got a DNF and... Was he? Did he, f- he finish Singapore, but in like fifth or sixth? Uh, he? he wasn't. It was. It wasn't anywhere. Back who should have been. I. You know. I'm not going to sit here. Yeah. I've given up with Sergio Perez. Um. But back who should have been a decent result. The fact he was quicker than Max basically all weekend, yes. and walked away with nothing to show for it was a bit sad. Uh. But Singapore. I've got a stat for you. Oh, here we go. He has had since he finished fourth in Miami. Yeah. Which was round six. Yeah. Since then, he has had one top six finish. Oh, where was that? I'm trying to think. Austria? That was in Zandvoort. Oh, no, Zandvoort. Yeah. Yes. Wild. Yeah, it was P10 in Singapore, so that was a great race for oh, him as well. Me. So, 
yeah, not not great from Perez uh, to be out in Q1 and obviously on a track that's so hard to follow and pass on. That was basically like all all chances of any good result. Maybe you could sneak a point or two with a clean race. Uh, but joining him, which was definitely more of a shock, was uh, Oscar Piastri for the second race in a row. Or second race weekend, obviously. He messed up quali, sprint quali in Cota and then messed up real quali in Mexico with an a idiotic deletion. Uh, which, yeah, was not great for him. Yeah, it was a really, really odd mistake, in, wasn't it? P17? Yep, was it? just P17. ahead. Just ahead of Checo Perez, yeah. P17 in the end. He obviously, unlike Checo, absolutely had the pace uh, to see himself into mm. Q2 quite comfortably. But, yeah, first lap, I think he just made a bit of an error. Second lap, then he got invalidated, and it was kind of nip and tuck. Would he have had time to get back into the pit lane and get back out? He didn't want to risk it. The team didn't want to risk it. Uh, and yeah, by the time he did his third lap, obviously the tyres just weren't there anymore. I don't think he had quite the full disposal of the battery either. Uh, so yeah, Oscar Piastri, second weekend in a row where in a qualifying session, uh, he's failed to see Q2. Uh, and that means now it is just Max Verstappen that has made it into Q3 in every single race weekend uh, this year. Which, which is pretty good going in the fourth fastest car. Behave. So. <laughs> that Red Bull has never been four fastest. Oh, it has. No, it hasn't. On, where, on where, is that Red Bull, where has that Red Bull been four fastest in qualifying? Oh, maybe not in qualifying. Exactly. But in, in Monza, it was down there. Yeah, it was, to be fair. I'll give you that one. Um, obviously, yeah, but like we said, they were joined by your perennial Q1 exiteer uh, in Zhou Guan Yu. Uh, Esteban Ocon, who just seemed to be a bit lacklustre throughout all of qualifying. For or... the second weekend in a row. Yep. Actually battered by Gasly. He was. Is noticing. And after everyone said Alex Albon was clearly on, you know, kind of the risk of Fraud being watch. replaced yeah. by Franco Colavinto in the future after he binned it into Wally Ben and, uh, on Friday night. Imagine for a second if Albon had gone out in Q1 and Colapinto made Q3. Instead, oh, it was Colapinto out in Q1 and Albon in Q3 and no one spoke about it. Right, the rest yeah. of the weekend. It's almost because that's what's expected of yeah, these two drivers. Exactly. But yeah. Yeah. People love a headline, and they do. Argentinians love their driver, so and they're they try love and giving Williams it, money. Williams have been yes. <laughs> raking in the money with all this as well. So good, on, good on for them and James Vowles especially as well mm. there. But Q two uh, would end up being a little bit more predictable, wouldn't it? Uh, in the end, apart from I don't think any of us saw Yuki Tsunoda stacking it. Uh, right towards the end of the session. So that kind of ruined Q2 just when it yes. could have potentially got a bit exciting. There could have been a couple of surprises. Yeah. Um, but yeah. It well, it was being... anti-climax, wasn't it? You basically had the two Hasses go through to yep. knock out the two R- RVs. And then, well, so it was getting towards the end of his lap and then red flagged it and no one else was going to improve. To be honest, I don't think Bottas or the Astons had the pace no, for Q3. No. Um, but maybe Lawson or Snowden would have done and knocked out Alvin or Gasly or one of the Hasses, but not to be. Or and, Hulkenberg, because uh, yes. he was right on the cusp, Sonoda. wasn't he? No, he wasn't. Hulkenberg was ahead of Magnus and Gasly in Q2. Oh, in Q2, fair enough. Okay. Yeah, we ignore what happened in Q3. But uh, yeah, Lawson was a bit screwed by his teammate causing a red flag, because yeah, that makes it 1-1 in quality, or no, 2-1. 2 nil, doesn't it? Because he technically didn't qualify in in Cota, but yes. Lawson probably would have outqualified Snoda. I have no evidence for that, but I'm just going to say it would have happened. Just vibes, Jamie. That's what you're basing on, yeah. is it? Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, but, I mean, yeah, we got to Q3, wasn't it? And despite the fact Ferrari had kind of been there all day long, we ended up with a repeat of last year. The clouds started to come in for Q3, mm. and Ferrari, and Carlos Sainz in particular, just absolutely came alive, didn't he? Sainz, two laps good enough for pole position in the end. Yeah. No one could get anywhere near him. No, it was crazy. And the first lap especially was, what, three or four tenths ahead of anyone else? Yeah. yeah. And then obviously the second lap, some people closed in, but it was still wasn't close enough. And he went faster anyway. It was a proper, proper good performance by Science for his third ever pole. And I think, if I remember rightly, the, the last two poles were not that good. One of them was Silverstone, where he had no purple sectors, wasn't it, in the wet. To get and a good lap in the wet like Cota. that. Uh, I thought it was Singapore, wasn't it? Oh, yes, it was. He went pole to flag, didn't he, in Singapore? Yeah. Um, which is probably a fair enough lap to get pole at Singapore. But it was an easy version, so you know. Exactly. Uh, yeah, quality from science. Absolutely quality. And too fair to Verstappen, he had no business being second, I don't think, in that, in that qualifying session. And uh, he did very well to stick it on the front row. Uh, had a Norris and Leclerc, who was very 
frustrated with himself for messing up his final lap um, and ending up in P4. Well, he got and his first Mercedes. lap. Oh, no, Verstappen, wasn't it, got his first Verstappen lap Verstappen got removed, his first lap deleted. He? Yeah. So the pressure was really on right at the end. I think that Red Bull, though, over one lap, obviously this is a very, very good track for Max as well. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it, it was still right there or thereabouts. And obviously, you know, it was a good lap time for him under pressure in a way that maybe Lando or Charles or even Carlos might have probably butchered uh, their second yeah. run as well there. Mercedes just kind of seemed to be a little bit distant come the end of qualifying. Kevin Magnussen, fantastic effort in P7 mm. to beat out Gasly, Hulkenberg, and then obviously Alex Albon rounding out our top 10. And that did shape us up, Jamie, for what could be quite an interesting race, couldn't it? Because... Obviously, Mexico, I believe it is the longest run in towards Turn 1 on yeah, the calendar. Yeah, it's up there, isn't it? Probably now um, Sochi's gone. I was thinking, yeah, Sochi was probably one of the only ones that rivaled it. So mm. starting on the second row here, not a bad shout. That's so obviously Lando, Norris, Charles Leclerc. They were looking, you know, potentially quite hungry. Talk, talk me through the start. Yeah, and much like last year again, really. Uh, last year, Verstappen qualified third and then was leading... Just based off his launch. Um, not Did even he qualify third last season. year? What's a Paris yeah, it was Ferrari one too. Oh, college. it was a Ferrari one too, wasn't it? Yeah, Checo got a good start from fourth or fifth. From fifth, yeah, from fifth on the grid. Um, so you had Norris, not Norris, sorry, Verstappen, the other one, uh, launch off the line very well and get immediately alongside and ahead of Carlos Sainz. They were both kind of merging towards the inside of the track because obviously that's where they want to cover. And Norris just did a bit... I th- I want, I want to whisper it, but it was not great car placement to go to the inside and just box himself in. Because he had a lot of momentum from, from third on the grid in the slipstream. And then for some reason tried to follow Verstappen through when Verstappen's on the very inside, Sainz is in kind of the middle. So there's no space to get inside either of them. And if you've gone to the outside, you know, obviously you're opening yourself up to being pushed off. But the momentum might have taken it then there because he did completely have to back off and lift because he was boxed in I, um, I I think the problem I've got with that there is you know, like you're saying he could have gone to the outside Charles Leclerc was still just about alongside him and obviously turn one when you're in a title fight like this you don't want to get taken out potentially at turn yeah. one at Mexico so it was kind of a yeah you know hindsight is a beautiful thing but I'm kind of there going there wasn't really a lot else he could have done it did just look a bit odd when he just chose Apart, yeah, it, well, I think it was open. kind of... Well, yeah, exactly. He was kind of, I'm going to try and put the car here. It's probably not going to work, but it's probably safer than anything else because generally yeah, speaking... He wasn't going to get taken out there. <laughs> well, generally speaking, being on the inside for Turn 1 is probably the best place to be, wasn't it? As yeah. we found out almost immediately, uh, because obviously yeah. Gasly, Albon and Sonoda would all come together and it would mean Sonoda had quite a high-speed crash, didn't he? Um, yeah. Down in towards Turn 1. The wheel came straight off. It was lucky it didn't really collect anybody else seriously. Um, but yeah, yeah, immediately we had two cars out at turn one. Yeah, and I think it was a racing incident, but if anyone was to be a portion blame, it would have been Sonoda. I it would think, have been Gasly. He was very ambitious. No, Gasly, why would he expect there to be two cars on his outside? Well, why on earth would Sonoda expect Gasly to move over on everybody? I he think didn't it was, move I, anywhere, I think it was, it was I think it was optimistic by Yuki, but I think if you're going to try and... so late. Well, I think, <laughs> but I think if you're going to try and apportion blame to anybody, you'd say it was the guy that didn't give the others any room. It, I mean, it, but then, it was a racing incident, but you're trying to yeah. you're trying to victim blame here, Jamie. <laughs> wow, I th- I think that was it was ambition over adhesion to borrow a quote from Martin Brundle from Sonoda to try and outbreak oh, five cars, and he got his just rewards. Um, and yeah, out at turn one, along with Alex Albon, Gasly got away with it, but I don't think he did anything wrong. He was just driving in a straight line, and he wasn't and driving in a straight line. He moved over. <laughs> I will have to do a VAR check on that because my instant reaction was Gasly was fine and within his rights to just be driving and Snowden was the one to go for the move and mess it up. Uh, but we'll have another look. Maybe I'm wrong. Let us know what you think in the comments. And, uh, don't, don't get me yeah. wrong, I'm not going to try to sit here and say it was Pierre Gasly's fault, but you're <laughs> trying to apportion blame there and uh, Gasly <laughs> moved over. Um, but I mean, yeah, Snowden, like you said, he, he was uh, being a bit optimistic. He was trying to be the hero. Uh, down in towards yeah. turn one, and apparently that's the second time that Sonoda's been out before turn one in Mexico, uh, which is yeah. which is quite yeah. impressive as well. Um, but it was also obviously with all that going on, people kind of ignored the fact that Max, obviously down the inside of Science at turn one, just completely ran Science off the road. So obviously Science had to cut through yeah. the grass at turn two, 
and then gave up the place ready for turn three. Oh, sorry, ready at turn four. Uh, and obviously with the safety mm-hmm. car call out immediately, uh, obviously it meant that the field was neutralised. And Sergio Perez, home Grand Prix, out in Q1, now can't even start the car in the right place and picked him up, himself up a five-second penalty. Yes, and lived in denial that it wasn't that they were wrong. Well, to be watching. fair, they said he jumped the start. Technically, he yes. didn't as such, but he had. Yeah, he didn't jump the lights, but he did park in the wrong place. So, how many Grand Prix is he got? Well, like two hundred fifty, two sixty. Yeah. yeah, he is on two hundred and seventy-seven starts. Wow. Will he see three hundred? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes. So Perez actually had quite a good start. He was up to about twelve. Yeah, he gained five spots. I um, and. Yes. Maybe because he was five metres ahead of his box. Uh, <laughs> not, maybe not five metres. He was a, bit, a a little bit ahead of his box. Um, and that was that for him. He got a five-second penalty. But it wasn't that, totally. Because a five-second in a Red Bull is not that bad. No. Uh, when you're racing against, like, Saubers and, and right, racing bulls and stuff. So, oh, one yeah. racing Also, bull. no on turn one, uh, Max barging science off. Clearly, the, the FIA... Uh, we spoke about this last week idiotic for not clamping down on this for for eight years and this is what they've created and Max Verstappen is shameless and will play to the rules that he's been given despite how morally right they are or not so he did nothing wrong by the rules in turn one obviously it's rude and you wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of it but there's nothing wrong with turn one in my mind well as i've said for so long now if i was a formula one driver going up against verstappen in that scenario i would quite happily crash with him every single time (laughs) until he learns that i'm just not gonna back out of it like seriously i know obviously russell tried it a couple of times in the last couple of years um but i would just be going for the mindset of if you don't give me space mate we're having a crash every single time and he's gonna at some point learn to back out of it. Yeah. Which, I of course, in, in a hypothetical science, world. Yeah. Yeah. With science and with Norris, I guess, we'll get on to. They both knew that they had faster cars. So, like, exactly. if you do just let him throw his toys out the pram at turn one, you're going to beat him anyway because the Red Bull's shocking on race pace at the minute. Well, you didn't know that in the first three quarters of the race. You didn't. But, yeah, didn't, as, but as we found still. out later on, the Red Bull... Well, I mean, obviously, the safety car came out, didn't it? Came back in on lap seven. Uh, and I we kind of all expected, I think, to a certain degree for Max just to start pulling away from Sainz and that Mm. just instantly did not happen did it? And it it took what Sainz one racing lap before he got Uh, bypassed? Yeah, well it was weird because Max tore away on the restart lap he was was one point something clear 1.1 I think it was at the 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 second lap Yeah, and then he basically had used all his battery up immediately to try and break the DRS and then as soon as the second lap came around Sainz was faster so got back in that DRS zone and was not taking any prisoners as soon as he got an opportunity to pass. Yeah, just absolutely... Well, he took Max, I think, a little bit by surprise, didn't he, with a late move to the inside down in yeah. turn one. It was beautiful. It was clean. Verstappen kind of accepted it. Well, I think the problem for Verstappen there is I think he forgot. And I'm not sure how I feel about it still, Jamie, but Mexico obviously turned the first two DRS zones are both from the back same detection back, yeah. point, aren't they? I don't love it, to be honest. I think I still do, simply because I feel like they changed it a few years ago, didn't they? Because it meant if you got the run pass over, they just come straight back past you at turn four. So I think it gives you a chance to actually get ahead and stay ahead. I just say get get one DRS in then, because there's no point in handing the advantage again to science down towards turn four. You might as well have them on a level playing field at least. No, so if you do you're, get you're just a it. salty Max fan this weekend. <laughs> you don't like it because your driver was a stinker. <laughs> And I mean, well, I'd say, Sainz got past him, didn't he? Max was already on the radio screaming that he had no battery. And then it got yeah. even worse for him, because one lap later, down in towards turn four, Lando Norris completely outbreaks him. Max goes, yeah. I'm going to do what I always do, get ahead of the apex, force him off the road, my corner, <laughs> haha, simply lovely. Lando doesn't back out Not of it. The case. Max never got fully in front, barges Lando off the road, and then Jamie, what on earth was turn seven? <laughs> Yeah, I can't even begin to defend this, to be honest. Uh, I was I was just annoyed at Verstappen, to be honest, because it was stupid. Yeah, I don't know what he was thinking. To be honest, turn four, I think, is a split second. Like, you're going to do what you always do in that situation, in that try and get the apex, and by the, the rules which are dumb, as we've documented, play to them, 
try and get ahead and force him off. No harm done. Like in Kota. Well, no harm done to you. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> you don't care what happens to the other person. Yeah, exactly. Um, which is not right, morally, but it's how the FIA have allowed things to go. So you're going to play by that. Well, apparently, Tell I was going to say about this quickly. Also, Sport have released an article this afternoon. I don't know if you've seen this. But obviously, they're, apparently, they are going to be changing the rules for 2025 surrounding this. But yeah. 19 of the 20 drivers voted in favour of them changing it for this weekend. Only one driver. I wonder who declined. that was. <laughs> I wonder who that was. <laughs> I mean, if you were Max, you would. would you would decline it because it's in your favour. Like, he is a ruthless competitor. That's an so... interesting way of just describing someone that's a dick behind the wheel, but okay. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to say it. It's, it's a, it's a fine line, isn't it? I mean, it's not a fine I'm, line. It's just awful. Like it's I mean, not I'm entertaining or fan fun. The drivers who stop at nothing to win. So I, I love the Michael Schumachers of the world, and, so, and like the, the dark arts of, of any sport to be honest. So like watching Argentina in the World Cup in 22, where they just started kicking all the Dutch players to waste time. I'm like, yes, that's what I want. It's not fair. You it's d- not right. Oh, mate, you're so <laughs> slimy and horrible. No, you want... Sport should be honourable to a certain degree. Um, but you love it and Senna. Yeah, but that as I, I had this argument with someone a couple of days ago about Ed Senna. The difference I Defend have... Defend Japan 1990 at Turn 1. Japan 19... Well, that was because of FI politics giving Pross 1989, wasn't it? Um, well, yeah. I, and I'm not going to try and sit here and defend but that But it was one. still a tactical but, foul, wasn't it? But my point with Senna, though, which I think people fail to see, why people respected him for it when Verstappen doesn't, is... And as Nigel Mansell said, Ayrton Senna never went into a Formula 1 race where he wasn't willing to put his life on the line to win. That was why mm-hmm. it was kind of... Not necessarily, you know, the right thing to do or anything. Well, it clearly obviously wasn't the right thing to do, otherwise he wouldn't have died. But um, <laughs> right. but obviously the difference there being was Senna took that risk knowing that was a possibility. That was, that a, possibility, was a real yeah. risk at that time. And in kind of doing that, it's often how it was kind of described with NASCAR why it was so entertaining in the 90s and 2000s as well. When there is that real risk of danger... The, your competitors kind of respect you for it to a certain degree as well. The fans kind of respect you for it because there's that risk that someone could die. Not it, and it's not that fans, you know, were watching it hoping someone will or expecting someone mm. to or anything like that. But nowadays, it's kind of with Max. It's a uh, no one's gonna get seriously injured, and all these people banging on, oh, about his fifty-two G crash at Silverstone <laughs> and all this that, and the other, and now oh, Lewis sent him to the hospital. It was precautionary. He did. Checks. It wasn't that he was actually injured or anything. Um, but obviously, when you kind of do it nowadays, it's not like life... It's not life or it's death. It's not a life on the time. line or anything like that. But it's then you can't just really blame that for that, just for, for being born in 1997 instead of No, I'm not saying I'm blaming him that for being born... But if he'd been born in 1957, he'd be dead. I think that's the problem. Yeah. Isn't it? <laughs> he wouldn't have made it to Formula 1, would he? Exactly. Uh, yeah. I can't defend Turn 7. It was dumb. It was... Maybe maybe he thought that Lando was letting him through, but regardless, it was a tactical foul. It was blow the belt, and I think he knew he was in the mud from turn four, so just was like, let me get Lando as far away from this race win as possible. Uh, and well, it handed P2 to Leclerc, so I guess in that sense it worked. I, um, I refuse basically... to believe that he did that consciously, though. I refuse I just think to he believe right. he, he dived in thinking, oh, well, let Charles get through. Oh, it was complete. But the fact of the matter is, Jamie, that a professional athlete like that should not be falling foul to red mist moments like that. Mm, I'm sure a lot of drivers do it, though. Can you think of many examples with other drivers at the top of the sport? What, Michael Schumacher? <laughs> no, I'm talking about the last 10 years or so. <laughs> okay. Uh,. Yeah, other than I'm thinking Maldonado at Monaco. At <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> then, yeah. If you're seriously, if your only comparison is Maldonado, then Perez you've got real problems. at Singapore when he drove into Sorokin for no reason. That that was an odd one, wasn't it? Um, that was an odd one. I think mean, I was even just trying to cover him off, but yeah. Yeah, I'm just um, misjudging it. But, but yeah, I don't think... I don't think Max was, like, enraged and trying to take Lando out. I think he was trying to... Oh, no, I, I think it was completely... I'm going down the inside here... 
Yeah. And it was just kind of... I I think, honestly, his mindset in that moment is, I don't give a shit what happens coming out of this corner. Yeah. If we're both out, I don't care. He's got one less race to try and beat me in the title. Yeah, exactly. That's where the, like, problem that's the problem lies. It was basically, well... If Lando's beating me anyway, I might as well do something stupid to cost him as many points as possible. Yeah. Which is not sportsmanlike. No. It's not. And like he said in an interview, didn't he? Uh, I have to go and find the quote, but he was basically... Lando lost points out as well. Exactly. Yeah. And that's where I take umbrage to it as well, because it's just slimy, unsportsmanlike. And it's one of those things that I don't really like with Max, is he'll kind of try and play it off as, oh, you know, well, I'm you know trying to play the numbers game and doing all this, that, and the other. And you're kind of going, drive quicker. You know, if you haven't got the car <laughs> well, to drive driving quicker. driving quite quickly. If you haven't got the car to drive quicker, you're kind of there going, you know, you can't kind of play that game. There's only a certain amount you can play that game, annoyingly. That's where I kind of struggle with it. Um, I think that's how we differ, because I do, I do love that. And like stuff like Schumacher stopping at nothing to win world championships. Like, obviously, in the, at the time, it feels really unsportsmanlike and yes it probably is it definitely is but that kind of winning mentality i do like an athlete a lot um i got the quote up now it says maybe without the penalties i could have finished in front of the mercedes yes but then lando yeah. probably would have won the race <laughs> yeah i don't <laughs> Which, like that but to be fair like there's i guess there is a difference it was in the end it was second versus sixth wasn't it which is 10 points and it would have been first and fourth probably which is 13 points. I, so. I, I genuinely don't think Lando would have beat Science anyway, to be fair. So I think that point is ultimately yeah, a little not. bit irrelevant. But still, yeah, it was just a bit... It was a bit of a... It's just one of those things where it's kind of there going, he just doesn't really respect the sport. That's my issue with it at yeah. the end of the day. It and kind of just makes a mockery. Up, can't they? Exactly. Uh, I personally think 20 seconds penalties for both of... 10 seconds for each of those instances. I laughed, I laughed, I laughed. I loved it. <laughs> I don't care what any Max fan says in the comments about me being biased or not. Absolutely <laughs> deserved. And I don't think they... You know, they've got to start throwing the book at him about this. And I hope they continue to do so till the end of the year. At the end of the day. Yeah. To be honest, I agree. I laughed a lot less. <laughs> but I the penalties were fair. And I think Max probably knew they were coming. I don't uh, think he thought because... it would have been 20 seconds worth. I think he was hoping think 20, for a 5 yeah. and maybe a 5 and nothing. Um, I kind of expected a, a nothing and a 10. I, do, I yeah. thought turn 4 was yeah. on the limit. But he's stuff he's got away with in the past. Well, um, it was like Vegas think... last year, wasn't it? Turn 1. Because Leclerc was very yeah. clever there in never letting Max be in front. Yes. Yeah. I do think without turn 7, he probably gets away with turn 4. I don't know what you think on that because I uh, think yeah you're probably he, right to be honest. Like what he did. I at think turn if Lando seven, had kept the place, yeah. Yeah, what he did at turn seven was a lot worse than what he did at turn four in my mind. Yeah, and it just it showed that he was not here to mess around and he's just here to barge people off. Well, turn, turn four turn without four turn was, seven looks a lot better. Exactly, turn four was just overly aggressive. Turn seven was just stupidity at the end of the day. Yes, that's yeah. exactly. You, you're kind of saying about this from a guy <laughs> we'll see a three-time world champion. Yeah, you're kind of there. Go- well, hopefully not, but we'll wait. And see. <laughs> um, but I mean, yeah, to be honest though, Jamie, the, the bit of the sad bit was kind of after this, the rest of the Grand Prix was quite boring, wasn't it? Really? Yes. <clears throat> and people are saying it was a classic. It really wasn't. I'm not gonna lie. There was a little bits like, and pieces got, but it was a quintessential Grand Effect era race, wasn't it? Of Mexican Grand just, Prix. Well, Mexican especially. Grand Prix as well. Of just everyone waits for the DRS. I mean, the only real highlights we had after this was obviously Perez just continuing to shoot himself in the foot throughout the rest of the afternoon. Uh, had some beef with Liam Lawson. Uh, they made contact, which, to be fair, was I think kind of a little bit of Lawson as well. Going, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna bully you a bit like <laughs> you did last week. Of we're both coming out but, of your seat. But Lawson was within his rights to do what he did. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And then, say, one lap later, Perez then would stroll. I'm staggered Perez didn't get a penalty for this one on that stroll. Yeah, same. Because he did exactly the same (laughs) to what uh, Max did to Lando earlier on. Uh, And so I got away with that one. I I wonder as well, Jamie, I forgot to say this earlier on. Do you reckon his slightly ahead of the grid box was a, it's my home Grand Prix. Surely they'll let me get away with this. (laughs) No. (laughs) It's the sort of thing that is just a misjudgment, isn't it? It's a stupid error, but 
Yeah. I just love that he was living in denial, even when they had... Like, the FIA have given you a penalty, and he's like, no, 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 check, I wasn't ahead. Yeah. And it's like, we've literally no, got they pictures. They can see it from <laughs> other angles, mate. You've, how did Bro get caught in 4K? <laughs> yeah, just bizarre, wasn't it? I mean, my, I think this will probably be my favourite 24 seconds of the entire season, is watching Max in the pit lane on lap 27 take both oh, of those penalties. Yeah. And I was I didn't just know you then, could take both penalties. I didn't know you could, to be honest. But, but it's because no one ever has two penalties stacked up like that. <laughs> is why we didn't know. Did he get penalty points for them as well? Uh, he got two penalty points on his licence for the second one, I believe, but not the first. So he's up to okay. six. That's probably fair. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, I mean, yeah. Kind of, yeah the Perez and Lawson incident. Yeah, Perez lost a bit of side pod during that um, by trying to barge Lawson off, and he wasn't having any of it, which I rate a lot because yep. you know Lawson will be driving that car quite soon. Yeah, gave Perez um, the middle finger when he overtook him later on, oh, which I, I thought it. was hilarious. <laughs> I can't. Th- I I don't think there's been many drivers that we both agree we like a lot. I think Liam Lawson's that guy. Well, I'd say there's a fair <laughs> bit of overlap. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you I, like Hulkenberg I, these days, don't you? I don't. I, you know, I don't like Hulkenberg, but I think he's doing a good job. I, I think the problem we have yeah. nowadays is that we normally dislike a driver because the other one likes him. <laughs> it's it's yeah, more fun maybe. that way. It is, um, it is. But I mean, yeah, Lawson I, but, is just, yeah, good. Kind of. Well, it made me laugh because obviously Perez after the race, I don't know if you read this, but he did an interview kind of saying, you know, Alonso was annoyed with Lawson last week. You know, he needs to watch himself. And you kind of go, no, mate, you're just upset. So was Fernando. You're two old guys. Yeah. Getting- dogged on by this kid like get a grip the pair of you I love um, it and also Perez trying to mug off Lawson later in the race when he had some contact with uh, Colapinto yeah and yeah. Uh, he was like on the radio this idiot crashing again ha 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 when you're literally last in a Red Bull exactly <laughs> at your that, home race uh, it's, yeah I think Checo <laughs> must tragic. have been saying that behind tears mustn't they yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. we had obviously Lewis and George were kind of some of the only entertainment throughout most of the rest of the afternoon because they were always battling uh, in a battle yeah. of the different cars. Uh, and obviously, I mean, the, most of the second half of the race wasn't it was just kind of Oscar and Max uh, making their ways back through until we yeah. did have one last moment, didn't we, Jamie, of Charles Leclerc after I tweeted last week about how I finally feel he's not going to crack under pressure, immediately <laughs> cracked under pressure. <laughs> Yeah, and it was actually a very impressive save. It on, was. It towards was. the end. Lando was cl- catching him, uh, closed the gap for about five seconds after the stops to right on his tail. And probably Lando was going to get him into turn one anyway, but coming out the last corner, Leclerc was so determined to get a good exit that he got a bit of wheel spin and almost did a Bottas from 2019 qualifying, but kept out of the wall. Very, very dusty out there. Um, and obviously Lando got the place, but Leclerc kept it with four wheels on the car and uh, yeah had to settle for third place and there was a bit of jeopardy or at least Sky were trying to hype up that Norris could catch eight seconds on signs yeah. in eight laps <laughs> I, I think signs never going to happen just in control well I've also said the fact that we haven't really spoke about signs since lap nine goes to show how in control he was yeah. wasn't he because it was it was one of those well it was a Carlos Sainz win wasn't it of he's kind of there or thereabouts throughout most of the year and then he just gets one weekend where everything clicks and yeah. you, it just honestly was probably the fastest man out there and rightly deserved yeah, yeah. to be. Yeah, similar to Melbourne, really, where, like, yeah, once he got the lead, he just drove off. Yeah. And that was it. He didn't see him. Comfortable, comfortable. Uh, Lando would claim P2, though, in the end, and the Charles Leclerc would claim P3 with fastest lap. Mercedes just weren't really there. The fact that Lewis Hamilton no. walked away with a P4 finish uh, kind of is impressive in itself. It's flattering. Uh, yeah. beat, beating out George, uh, Max Verstappen, Magnussen. A brilliant weekend by him yeah. ahead of Oscar Piastri, yeah. Hulkenberg and Gasly as our top 10 uh, so I mean most of your so top 10 were exactly points. what they were in qualifying weren't they yeah yeah. you just had a Piastri coming back through didn't you yeah pretty much um, but Has getting Albie 8 points and so RB getting none yeah uh, I mean it's, it's all over it's all over for RB I think it probably is like unless you get a 2021 style Abu Dhabi where they're 4th and 5th but yeah, I, it's it's over 10 points now, is it? Um, Haas are on 46, RB are on 36. I mean, I'm looking at this, Jamie. Haas need just one miracle result. Aston Martin, 40 points ahead. That would be incredible. If Haas got like they a double happen, podium but... in Vegas or something. Yeah. Got like How 30 many points. Of, of, of Madison and Hulkenberg got in a combined 500 races? Uh, one. One. <laughs> 
So but it, it, but it, to be fair to, to be fair to Magnuson, at one point he did have a one hundred percent podium rank. He did. Yeah. I, I like the fact gone... he always seems to just get better when he knows he hasn't got a drive next year. Yeah, it's true. Is it, well, it's like the pressure's off, isn't it? He's not trying. But anymore. if he'd done this and earlier on in the year, he would have absolutely actually. been kept on. I wonder if Hassan now a little bit gutted that they're signing Ocon. I'm yeah, still Ocon's staggered they rubbish. did, to be honest. I still feel I this is a bit weird. It is a bit weird, but Ocon had nowhere to go, did he? He was definitely getting dropped, and like he's, it's like if you're gonna have Magnussen or Ocon, a pretty similar caliber drivers right now. Yeah, but but Ocon's just younger, 30s. isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Magnus and I can't wait to see him just tear up Inzer again in GTP cars, to be honest. I'm looking forward to that. That'd be great. Um, yeah. Do your worst. Exactly. Exactly. But I mean, yeah, it was it was an okay race, wasn't it? Like I said, I think it was kind of just completely highlighted by those couple of incidents, wasn't it? Um, yeah. But it does mean now Ferrari, Jamie, they are really making a march towards the championship, they really aren't they? Are. 29 points back from McLaren uh, and 25 ahead of Red Bull. Jamie 183. Your constructors' world champions of 2024 <laughs> will be McLaren. You're still gonna say, "Are you?" I, 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 I'm one of the. Actually, I hope in a weird way it is McLaren because it gives Ferrari more wind tunnel time next year for Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I do That's think what I'm thinking it about. Be tight, and it, Piastri's form has been concerning. Uh, it hasn't been that <laughs> bad. It was this weekend. Yeah, it was a bit bad. Um, but last weekend he, he did a right in the Grand Prix. It was just sprint when quality bottled. What was it? Fifth? Was it? Let me. It was fifth in the Grand Prix. Yeah, exactly. But like, yeah, a couple of bad qualities in a row, and like. Yeah, I think they've of, both well, been a little. Ferrari bit had a one-two and a one-three, haven't they? Yeah, I so. think Ferrari are just cooking on all cylinders at the moment, which is good for the yeah. team of Marinello. And I mean, it Jamie. Is. And. Yeah. It, it segues us nicely into our quiz. Oh, no. <laughs> Ferrari and McLaren are battling for the world championship. You've you've got a fairly easy quiz, I feel like, for you this week. Okay. When was the last time, Jamie, Ferrari and McLaren battled for the championship like this? On their own, or probably I'm guessing you're saying 08. I am gonna say 08. You, could, you 10, Ferrari 2010, 2012, they weren't really there. Or a Massa no. wasn't really there. You've got ninety seconds, Jamie, I'm gonna say. Okay. To name me every single driver that competed in the 2008 oh, no. season. Okay. Your time starts now. Hamilton, yes. Kovalainen, yes. Massa, Raikkonen, yes. Heidfeld, Kubica, yes. uh, Alonso, PK. Yes. You're doing this very uh, methodically. I like it. Weber, Coulthard. Uh, yes. Uh, Vettel, Bourdais. Yes. Uh... Rosberg Nakajima. Yes. Davidson Sato. Yes. Button Barrichello. Yes. How many more teams are there? You have two <laughs> more teams. Um, Glock and Trulli. Yes. Uh, you got four. You know, seconds left. One more team. Oh no. Uh oh, Fisichella Sutil. Well done. Nailed oh, it. that was easy. It was easy. I thought it would be for you. But I thought we'd, we'd do a trip. No, no 07, there were loads of random other drivers. No, 07, like there was a bit more. Yeah, that's all 22. You nailed it. There was no replacement drivers. No replacement you. drivers in 08. It's a bit odd because 7 and 9, there were quite a few, if I remember correctly. Yeah. 2007. And 10, there were 28 drivers. 2007 saw 26 drivers, although technically Marcus Winkelhock isn't classified. Because uh, he, he never, be. well, he never finished a Grand Prix. More laps exactly. led than most, most of the drivers. Exactly. Yeah, and then 2009 obviously had quite a few as well. Um, I tell you what, Jamie, we need to do a podcast at some point about the ridiculous 2007 Super Aguri. Because I forgot just how oh, actually great, decent it? that car was. Yeah. And then Sato they passing away. Alonso in Canada 07. Well, it was insane. the fact that they made it into Q3 at Australia, just first yeah. race of the year. They were on, the, like they were rapid, <laughs> which is a, such yeah. a segue. Than a random rabbit hole that we don't need to be doing today. Um, yeah, not at all. Driver of the day, Jamie. I think it's pretty easy. It's between two drivers, isn't it? It's Sainz and Kevin Magnussen. Probably Sainz. Oh, it's got to be, it's got to be uh, Max Verstappen. No, Carlos Sainz. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think Carlos, Carlos. Sainz is fair. I think Carlos Sainz is fair. Magnussen definitely the second one as well there. Uh, race rating? I, mean, I, I don't like how much hype this race is getting. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, maybe I'm salty, but it wasn't great. 
like you had the flashpoint and after that it was rubbish it was pretty boring after. i think honestly it was a bit like australia uh, so i'm gonna say six yeah i'm gonna say six and a half. i'll say six i'll say six and a half as well that's yeah. similar to imola yeah and mel we definitely rate japan too highly looking back at this we did yeah i can't remember anything worse than usa japan. i agree with that yep and better yeah. than Zanville, so fair yeah perfect Perfect. I don't know why our Singapore ratings never appeared, Jamie. You must have missed those. I know, we didn't. We you, must have missed them. You're going uh, to have to write those back in at some point. Um, I know. I know. The last thing we've got to do then, Jamie, we kind of smashed through it, haven't we? Uh, predictions recap. Yes. Uh, I'm just updating the, the prediction thing. Uh, the race rating, sorry. Good man. Good man. Prediction recap. I was losing this you were. race weekend. 68 to 64 in my favour. Indeed, indeed. Uh... We were both really boring, actually. We predicted the same podium. We did. We did. Um, Just in a different order, we should add. Yeah. I went for Charles Leclerc and Pole. Wrong Ferrari. Point. Zero points. I went Max Verstappen win. Definitely Zero not. points. <laughs> Charles Leclerc second. One that point. One. And Landon Norris third, which will also get me one point. Two points. Not a good week. You put Max Verstappen on pole. Zero points. Uh, Lando Norris to win the race. One point. Max Verstappen second. Zero points. And you scabbed a set of two <laughs> points out of the I feel like I've you become are, the new TV183. You three are points. A snake. Three points to me, got, sir. So, not much change, really. Three to two. Yep. But a five point uh, buffer, I'm going to have to start being. I'm going to have to start being a bit rogue, aren't I? You're going to have to try and scrape something out of this towards the end of the year. I might start letting you go first, just so I can go different. Fair enough. I, I would embrace that towards the end of the year. <laughs> we'll um, see. We'll see on, uh, on on Friday or Thursday what I say. Exactly. Exactly. Have we got anything else to add, Jamie? We've kind of smashed through this, haven't we? We did smash through that. I mean, yeah, because the race is quite uneventful, as we know. Well, apart um, from or everything that happened inside three laps. Yes. Yeah, that was it, really, wasn't it? Alonso's 400 wraith, race, Wraith, ended up in a in a debilitating failure for him. Um, just like his 300th, like, fun fact. Just like his 300th, yeah. He just retires early every time he's a milestone. Yeah. Um, Only 600 Holkenberg. more to go for a launcher. <laughs> isn't that mad? How, there's been... When was F1000? Uh, Shanghai 2019. 2019. So we're up over 1100 now. But still, Alonso's getting on for like... He's wh- competing well in more a than third. a third of a Grand Prix ever hosted. So if you picked an F1 race from history... At random, yeah. There's more than a one in three chance that Alonso competed it. Yes, that's mad. But it's yeah, also it's just again about how many races are. The fact that you could pick a race from the last two years, and there's been pretty much as many Grand Prix as there were throughout the entire 1950s. Um, well, yeah, it's true. Uh, Hulkenberg is extending his lead to Stroll in P10 of the championship. So <laughs> wow, that's big news. What's that gap, sir? Um, uh, seven points. In Hulkenberg's yeah, favour. Fair enough. It just takes Aston Martin okay. to get good again like they did at the end of last year. Because they were pretty much yeah. in this position at this time last year and then they got a couple of podiums, didn't they? Right yeah, the Brazil. And, admittedly, third, neither of them were Stroll, but still. <laughs> when was Stroll's yes. last podium? 20... He hasn't had a ground effect one, has he? No, 2021? No, he didn't no, get one in 2021. 2020? Yeah, he must have been 2020, yeah, would have been... surely. Would have been Monza 2020, wouldn't it? Uh, No, you're... um. Checo win. Oh, Bahrain. yeah, he got one at Sakir, didn't he? Yeah. That's mad, isn't it? Yeah. When I mean, he's only ever had three in yeah. a car that his teammates have probably got about 12 in that time. Pretty much. Well, Alonso got about that last year, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. Wild. Absolutely yeah, wild. Perez was about five in 2020, didn't he? Yeah, Perez did really well in 2020. Red Bull has That's absolutely crippled his constant. career. Exactly, it's mad. Well, they, it? they they revived it. I mean, he was going to be out of the sport in twenty one, if not for the yeah, so, yeah. Like, and he did well in twenty twenty one and two. He's just got worse and every it, year, hasn't he? It feels like in comparison yeah. to Max, he's just got further away yeah. from him, uh, which is a bit of a shame. Um, as well, always, is it? <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. Because uh, I mean, he could still end up somewhere else in the future, but I'm not convinced anymore. I don't think anyone wants to touch damaged goods, really. Um, no. Thank you all, as always, so much for listening. If you aren't already, please do make sure you get yourself sub. We're celebrating Valtteri Bottas because we're at 770 subscribers now. Uh, so hopefully wow. we'll get to 777 uh, very soon as well. Uh, we want to hit 1k by the end of the year. That's the big goal. So please do consider dropping us a sub. 
uh, before before the end of the year. Jamie, as always, it has been a pleasure, uh, and we will return uh, later on this week, hopefully, with more Knowing Wheel.